interesting. Oh! And look at that reflection in my forehead. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing a full in-depth, I guess full on review. I can't say it's a first impression because I have used this a couple times before. I haven't used it and tested it all day and I also haven't used it by itself. And it's the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I did actually show this to you guys in my previous video. However, I did say in that video that I feel like it kind of needed its own video just because I was applying it over the top of another foundation and I couldn't really tell what the coverage was like. And also as well, I thought it would just be best to do a wear test with this and wear it for, you know, at least eight hours and see how it actually holds up throughout the day and also a lot of you guys in the comments did say that you would like me to do a full video on this so here it is just for reference if you are new to my channel first of all if you're new hi welcome thanks for watching this video but if you want to subscribe after this feel free the button's just down there i'm just saying if you are new to my channel my skin type is mostly oily although at the moment i do sometimes get eczema flare-ups on my face so i can can get like dryness just around my cheeks a little bit on my nose and around my eyes it's not too bad at the moment so my skin i would say is mostly oily at the moment but at the moment it's doing pretty good I would say my skin's looking quite nice and I don't have many active sort of breakouts or anything and I've just realized that I forgot to put instant tan on my neck so this is not going to match me but I will put bronzer on my neck or something we'll figure it out let's just let's just let's get into it <laughs> thumbs up if you want to see more foundation wear test videos because I used to do these all the time so as always with Fenty they do have a really good shade range so they do have 50 shades in the UK this is 27 pounds so it's definitely you know more pricey but then it is Fenty so that is exactly what I would expect. I do believe they have all of the same shades as their original foundation, the whatever it was called. I think it was just called the Pro Filter Matte Foundation, the liquid one. So I've got three shades. I've got the shade 190, which is the one that I used the other day, which I would imagine is going to be the shade that I will use all over my face. I've also got the shades 180 and 185. So I'll just quickly show you those. This one is 180. This one is 185. I think 180 actually looks a little bit darker. This one looks a little bit darker than 185. And then 190 is this one. So 190, 185. Oh god, can I hold three at the same time? And then 180, 190, 185 in the middle, and then 180 over here. When I actually swatch these on the back of my hand, they all look quite similar. So this one's 180. Then I'm gonna do 185, which definitely looks lighter. And then 190 on this finger here. I've just swatched them on the back of my hand and you literally can't even see them, like at all. Interesting. So I am just gonna put a little bit of concealer on first because this is what I've seen other people do with this foundation because obviously it's powder. It's not really gonna work that great if you put concealer on, you know, over the top of it. But I'm literally just gonna do my under eyes so we can see how well it kind of covers the redness around my nose and any sort of like little blemish scars that I've got going on. I've actually got a little bit of leftover mascara on this eye where I clearly didn't remove my makeup properly last night around my eyes. Good job, so good job. This is the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer in the shade Cashmere. Then to blend this over most of my face, I'm just taking a dense buffing brush because I think this will probably be the best sort of thing to apply it with. I could be wrong, but let's give it a try. So shade 190, it does come with a sponge, but I'm not the biggest fan of sponges. I might try and use that on some of my face and see if it gives any extra coverage, but I'm just gonna swirl my brush in here and then just start working this into my skin. And I'm gonna do half my face first so that we can see the differences. Okay, well, it's definitely giving me some coverage because I can tell that, you know, this side is darker than the other side of my face. Let's try and do pretty much exactly half. I'm definitely gonna need to bronze up my neck. Okay, just gonna take a slightly smaller brush to do just around my nose. Ooh. One thing that I am noticing is it definitely looks darker on my face than it does in the pan. Can you kind of see what I mean? I think it looks a little bit darker when it actually hits your skin. You know what? I am just gonna take a little bit of 185 and I'm just gonna put a little bit of this underneath my eyes to kind of brighten them a little bit. Did that do anything? Maybe a little bit, I don't know. Well, there's definitely a noticeable difference in my skin. This side actually does look a lot smoother and I'm just gonna give you a little close up of my nose. Let me just turn the brightness down. Hopefully you can see the pores on my nose. Can you see here on this side, my pores are a lot more noticeable on my nose than on this side where I have put the foundation and it's definitely covered 
some of this redness that I have on the sides of my nose. And then if you can see down here, I do have a couple acne scars and stuff. It hasn't fully covered them, so I think I'm gonna try with the sponge. Yeah, I think I'll try with the sponge and see if I can add a little bit more coverage to these, but overall, it really does look quite smooth on my skin. It feels quite light. It doesn't feel too heavy. I think it looks quite nice so far. So this is without, and this is with. Other than the fact that I do look a little bit orange because uh, I need to bronze up my neck. I think it looks pretty good. Let me just add a bit of bronzer to my neck because that is really bugging me. Oh, also by the way, the primer that I used before this is the Pixi Skin Blurring Beauty Elixir, which is really, really cheap. I actually did also use the Fenty Skin SPF Moisturizer, um, which I've actually been quite enjoying recently. I've got that all over my face and down my neck as well. But yeah, I used a primer that I know kind of works with most of my foundations. Nobody's gonna know. How would they know? And now my neck's a little bit too dark. Let's take the sponge that comes with it, which is literally like the thinnest little sponge ever. I guess you can kind of bend it and put it in the shape that you want. See if I can get a little bit more coverage down here on my blemishes. Probably would have been more useful to test this on a day where my skin was having a bit more of a breakout, but I'm sorry that I can't really control that. <laughs> okay. I think that definitely did give me a little bit of extra coverage, but it's not quite full coverage. If you do have any bigger blemishes or breakouts or anything, it'd probably be best to put some concealer on those first and then go in with this. Let's do the other half of my face. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same. Yeah, look, it definitely is darker on my face than it is in the pan. I watched Rihanna do her little demo of this foundation. Uh, she did a video on the Fenty YouTube channel, but her skin looked so perfect that you can't even really tell a difference between before and after. Only thing is I do feel like I'm using quite a lot of product. Like the Fenty logo has nearly disappeared. And I think, yeah, to get the coverage that I'm wanting, I am needing to use quite a lot of it and like dip my brush in quite a few times. Okay. I do actually have some drier patches around my eyebrows where I've had like a bit of eczema breakout. And I think it is clinging a little bit just to this dry area, like directly above my eyebrow. I'm not sure how well that's coming across on camera. Yeah, I think you can kind of see here. Do you see like just this tiny little area above my eyebrow is clung a little bit more to the color where I've got a dry, dry bit of skin. And then again, take a bit of 185 and just put a little bit of this under my eyes. I don't really know if that's doing anything that's the only thing but I do definitely think that that has done a nice job. It's got pretty good coverage. I'm happy with how my skin looks. It definitely does feel quite matte. It doesn't feel super dry to the point where like it feels uncomfortable, but it definitely feels matte. I'm just being real. Like I don't really think you'd like this if you had dry skin because obviously it's a powder foundation. It's gonna feel like a powder. That does kind of give me hope that it might last long though. It's sort of smoothed over the pores on my nose a bit, but you can still definitely see them. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's looking nice? I think it looks quite good. Can you see on my nose how it's sort of smooth the pores but not fully hopefully you can kind of see that as i started putting that on it was around 12 40 in the afternoon it's now 12 50 so i will try and keep this on until i kind of go to bed and take my makeup off so yeah it will be on for a good well it will be at least eight hours i'm just going to show you in natural light so let me just turn my lights off and open the curtains oh my god it's really snowing outside wow well that's exciting sorry majorly distracted natural lighting i'm not really sure how helpful this is actually maybe let me let me go stand closer to the window so i'm just going to do the rest of my makeup as normal and then i will come back So somebody please tell me why I've never tried a tubing mascara until now. I'd heard of them, but I'd never actually tried one. This is the L'Oreal Air Volume Mascara. It says on here, easy waterproof, but it's the type of mascara where you literally just use water to remove it, like warm water, just get it on a flannel and it kind of just almost like peels off in tubes. So this is the finished face with the Fenty foundation. I feel like something's missing. I don't know, can't really figure out what. Do I need more blush? More of like a peachy blush? Maybe the blush is too shimmery? I don't know. My lip combo, by the way, is the Bare Minerals Lip Liner in the shade Freestyle and the NARS Velvet Lip Glide in the shade Swing. This feels so nice. 
face. Everything applied perfectly over the top of it. Um, the only thing that I noticed is that on my nose, it does look a little bit more pory than <laughs> if I were to use a liquid foundation. And I especially noticed that when I was putting my highlighter on and like probably looking up close at my nose, I was like, hmm, yeah, you can see a few more pores than usual. So it hasn't quite smoothed my nose as much as other liquid foundations have, but the rest of my skin is actually looking really smooth. So I guess we would just see how this lasts throughout the day. But so far, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's looking all right. So I'll catch up with you all in a bit. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Do you want to come up? Do you want to come on my lap? You just want to be on camera, don't you? It's my baby. It's my baby. Hello, gorgeous girl. Oh, that was a big yawn. Look at these little flippity floppity ears. I think she just wanted to sit on my lap while I filmed, uh, while I did some thumbnail shots. <laughs> You're getting so big, Pinks. I think she's a little sleepy because she's just woken up from a nap. She just wandered in and came and found me. Came and found me, didn't you, Pinks? Should we go for a snowy walk in a bit? <laughs> That's not good. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully she didn't just lick off the foundation. No, you know what? It's uh, it's looking okay. Thank you for your input, Pinks. We put you down on the floor. Do you want to go on your bed? I'm sure you probably don't want to be on my lap the whole time. Or do you? <laughs> I love my doggy. If you don't follow her Instagram, by the way, I did make her an Instagram just to post little updates. And also there's more stuff of her over on my vlog channel, but she's actually gotten really big. And it's so crazy looking back on the footage from when we first got her. So we've had her for three months now. We got her on November the 13th. And yeah, she's grown and changed so much since we first got her. She's definitely got a lot more black in her fur now along her back. She's all sorts of different colours. She's got a stripe down the middle of her, like a little subtle stripe. She's got, well, she's always had black in her tail, but yeah, she's all lots of different colours now. And she's really heavy and she's so big. Come on then, gorgeous girl. I love you. <laughs> Hello everyone. So it's now currently 4.39. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. So that means that this foundation has been on my face for four hours, I think. Yeah. Yeah, four hours, is that it? It's looking pretty good so far, although I will just say, when I was looking at my face more throughout the day and like catching myself in the mirror, I was thinking, oh, I think that shade is a bit too dark for me. And I do think that it does look a bit too dark. So maybe next time, I don't know whether it's oxidized. I don't know, does it look, I guess I'll be able to see in the clips before this one, whether or not it looks darker now. I don't know whether it's kind of oxidized or whether it just was too dark earlier and I didn't really notice because of my studio lights and like looking in a small mirror. But when I kind of step back and look in a bigger mirror I did think it looked a little bit too dark all over my face um, and I did look a bit orange but interestingly enough the areas that I usually get the most oily are kind of like round here um, and on my nose but the oiliest area at the moment is actually my forehead which does definitely get oily um, but you can kind of see the light reflecting off it definitely more than the rest of my face it could be because at the moment um, you know like I said I do have been getting drier patches around here oh also by the way the instant tan is kind of half wash washed off my hands but something unusual is that my nose would normally be really oily by now. Something that is unusual though is that normally my nose would get oily before my forehead, but my forehead seems to be the most oily at the moment. It still looks pretty nice though. I do think that it is emphasizing the texture on my skin ever so slightly. I'm not too sure why that is. Maybe it's just because I haven't filmed one of these videos in a while that I, you know, I'm not fully used to keeping on checking in on my foundation over a while, but I don't know. I feel like my forehead even looks a little bit textured. Let me just zoom you in. Yeah, can you see what I mean about my forehead looking shiny? This, you know, the rest of my face still looks pretty good to be honest. I just turned on the bright Hopefully you can kind of see that texture that I'm talking about on my forehead. Yeah, I don't know. It looks pretty good still. But then I guess it has only been four hours. Thinking into my smile lines a little bit, but that's very usual, very normal for me. If I just sit da back down here with the brightness turned down. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's it's looking fine on the rest of my face, but not my forehead, which is a little bit strange. But I guess that's all I have to report for now. It's currently now 4.43 and I will check back in with you guys a little bit later on. I'm really sorry if you can hear James on his Xbox next door. The time is currently 22. Oh, it's 22.22. So wait, let me think. It's nearly been on for 10 hours with no touch-ups and look at that reflection in my forehead <laughs> the strangest thing is the rest of my face isn't looking too bad but my forehead has gone insanely oily i wonder whether that could be because on this area here what the hell where my lip products have come off i've just got like a ring of white around my mouth i think that's because i had like overlined my lips and then as that's worn off like the lip line is worn off and it's just left like a white 
like ring around my mouth. Maybe I didn't blend it like close enough to my mouth. I don't know, that looks really weird. I swear that didn't look like that earlier. I mean, I did have a roast dinner, so it could be something to do with that. But what I was gonna say, sorry, I got distracted. Um, The reason why I think my forehead might be a bit oily is because I put the least amount of product here. Whereas on my cheeks, obviously I, I put like a double layer under my eye because I did shade 190 and then I did 185 as well. So this kind of had two layers of product. And then I guess like this part of my face doesn't tend to get that oily. My chin usually does get quite oily. Um, but yeah, I think my forehead was where I put the least amount of the foundation. So maybe because I didn't quite have as much on as the rest of my face, it hasn't, it wasn't as matte to start out with. So it, it hasn't done as good job as of like oil control. That's the only thing I can think of um, because it does look significantly more oily than the rest of my face. But if I just zoom you in on the rest of my face, it still looks pretty good. And around my nose, around these areas where I tend to get sort of the oiliest, like literally just here. I mean, they definitely are looking shiny and you can see my oils coming through, but it hasn't kind of crazily broken up in those places. Yeah, it's just gone very strange around my mouth and kind of like my moustache area. I feel like it looks a little bit sort of like clingy and patchy around here. But my blush is still here. My highlight is still here. Um, my bronze is still here. Everything's kind of last lasted pretty well over the top of it. My mascara hasn't smudged. But yeah, that is one oily ass forehead. Um, my nose, surprisingly. Normally, like if you guys have watched quite a few of these videos, my nose usually comes out being the most oily and it would be like reflecting light all over the place but i mean it's oily but it's not too it's not too bad could be because pinky's licked my nose a couple times today maybe she licked the oil off <laughs> oh, by the way i did change my lip product um i put on some of the madison beer gloss was it one of the madison beer glosses from morphe but yeah this is how it's looking after nearly 10 hours. I hope my maths is right there. I think in future, I just wouldn't let it get to this point. Um, like I usually say in these videos, I probably would have just touched it up after maybe five hours and then I wouldn't have ended up looking like this, but I always want to give it the full wear test just to see how it does on its own. Just looking back on these clips, I feel like my face looks a bit more orange by the end of the day than it did at the start. I don't know if that's just me, but I'm pretty sure that I don't know. Did it look this orange earlier? Maybe it did. I just feel like looking through the clips as I go, and especially this one right here, I think it's gone a little bit more orange and got a little bit darker throughout the day. What do you guys think? Do you agree? So, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's the most long lasting foundation if you are looking for something that is not gonna get shiny at all. But I would say in terms of it's like wear performance, it's done decently well and my, my face still looks smooth. Let's just see what happens if I put on, oh, you know what? I feel like I need to blot a bit first. I'm just gonna use the back of my hand to pat away some of this oil. Does anyone else do that? I'm sure they probably do. Yeah, see, already that looks so much better. I genuinely do that sometimes if I'm out in public and I'm looking a bit oily. I just take like my hand and just slap myself in the face a couple times and it, you know, makes you look a little bit better. Yes, yeah, even just doing that, blotting my skin with my hand kind of worked to just dull down some of that oil. This is what it looks like after nine and a half hours. I wish there was some natural light that I could show you it in, but uh, there's not. So this will have to do. Yeah, do you see what I mean around my mouth? Was it doing that earlier and I just didn't notice? My nose and... Forehead. So overall, the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. Would I use this again? Yes, I definitely would use it again. Would I choose this other over my other foundations, like liquid foundations? Probably not, if I'm being completely honest, just because I do find it a little bit quicker to just blob some liquid foundation all over my face, buff it out with a brush and you're good to go. But if you're used to working with powder foundation, maybe you would find this really quick and easy to use, I don't know. But for me, it just took a little bit more time to kind of blend it and buff it and get it to how I wanted. What do you think? Right, I'm just gonna answer a question of the day. If you guys have got any more questions for me about anything at all, leave them down below with the hashtag question of the day because if you put the hashtag then I can find your comment easier and I might answer it at the end of my next video. Today's question comes from Sarah Frederick and she said, hey Soph, love your videos. Thank you very much. What are your recommendations for mascaras that don't transfer under the eyes? I've tried everything from drugstore to high end and nothing seems to work, not to mention I can't use a lot of powder around my eyes because it dries out and irritates my contacts. Thanks. So one that I would really recommend for this is actually the one that I'm wearing today. Hopefully you've noticed in the close-ups, I've worn this mascara all day, not touched it up, and it hasn't smudged. It is technically a waterproof mascara, but like I said earlier, it's a tubing one. So it just comes off with warm water. To be fair, I haven't actually tried this like under the water to go swimming or anything because I mean, you know, it's a pandemic. But this one doesn't smudge or do the thing where it like gives that sort of like dark shadow under your eyes. When this does come off, it kind of like comes off in like little tubes because it's a tubing mascara, which is still kind of like blows 
my mind. So this one I would really recommend for that. So if you have a really bad problem with it, I'd probably recommend going for a waterproof mascara um, just because it's a lot less likely to do that. But other mascaras that I found that don't smudge under my eyes are the Bare Minerals, oh my God, what is it called? Bare Minerals Lashtopia, is that what it's called? Bare Minerals Lashtopia mascara, I absolutely love that one. Also as well, the L'Oreal Paradise mascara, I don't find, ow, I just bit my tongue. I don't find does that. The KVD Vegan Beauty mascara, the Go Big or Go Home mascara, I don't find it does that either. Um, there's quite a few actually that I find don't do it, but I would say those are probably the best ones that I've tried in terms of that. Right, I'm gonna go now. I hope you guys found this video helpful. For those of you that wanted to see it, I hope that this was a helpful review. I will leave the foundation link down below where you can get this from. And yeah, I hope you guys are all doing good and I will see you in my next video. Bye.